Hello, I'm Rick Stivers. I'd like to welcome you back to Young Martin's Reels. Today's project is going to be this Abumatic 290. And uh, this reel, I've had it for about a month now. It belongs to Ken. And uh, I think Ken's getting a little antsy. He wants to get it out on eBay for sale because he found... I, I was with him today. We picked this up at the uh, flea market. And uh, he was really excited about it. And uh, he would like to get it back out on eBay so he can use the money to help turn a profit. So we're going to start off by taking the cap off. And uh, let's see if we can't get this sucker apart. It's been a while since I took an Abumatic apart. I don't believe it comes apart like this, but we'll see here. Just a second. Yes, it does. All right. There we go. Let's see. Drag knob comes off. Then the handle comes out like so. And see, this handle slides up inside this piece. Like so, yep, and there, and everything else fell out. Okay, let's see if we can remember how that all goes together. Yep, this goes in first. And let's see here. This one goes in here like so. Yep, that's going to go on there like that. And this one goes on here. And then the whole thing will sit down inside there like so like that okay and that's how that fits okay so take that off set it over to the side we'll take the bearing off we'll take this washer off and i think we're about ready to move to the other side and if i remember correctly it's a little bit of a hassle to get the uh spool off of this because that's not going to just turn um and, but the handle won't just grab hold of it either now because i've taken all that drag assembly off so what i'm going to use i'm just going to use an adjustable wrench and put it on here like so and then let's see if we can get that spinner head down screw there we go spinner heads off all right and a lot of old line here I want to get out of the way. I'll snip that off. There we go. And let's see. I'm trying to read the writing on the top of it. You guys can probably use it better than I can. Off and on. Okay, so seems yep there you go turn it this way to take it off it unlocks see these little post here yeah see the way they're made they slip in here and then lock into place we'll clean all that up let's see if this this part does not want to come out yet i think we have to free it up on the other side so let's go to the other side take off the side plate this is a very greasy reel it's got grease everywhere which is good. That means it's not going to be all corroded up, I don't believe. That's a long button screw. That holds the button in place. But, well, not completely. Something else is holding it, too. So, let's go ahead and take out the other screw. Which has relieved a lot of tension on that button. Take that screw out. Side plate off. Now we can lift the button out. All right, that brings us to this juncture. And that doesn't come out through there yet. I think we've got two C-clips here that we're gonna have to take off. Yeah, we do. Got one here and one over here. This one back here is a little hard for you guys to see because it's in back behind that. So let's go ahead and take off the first C-clip or E-clip. Looks like it's going to be easier said, though, than done. I'm trying to make sure it doesn't shoot across the room.
pop off. It started to come. There we go. That popped it off. Okay, that's one C clip or E clip. And we still got to get the one off the other side, which is even more difficult to get to. I may end up having to take this off camera. I don't know if I'm going to be able to set this up so you guys can see it and see me take that clip off. Well, we got lucky. I popped it loose. You can see it's still kind of sitting in there. And we're going to take it out. There we go. There it is. Okay, that's both those C-clips off. Now, we should be able to slide this assembly out of the front, like so. Okay, and it's really, the, the reel is really um, oiled or greased well, but it has a lot of uh, grit and dirt in it. Okay, so now we're going to see, with that out, if we can take this out. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and rotate the pinion around. Or the main gear so it'll bring this to the rear like so and uh can we take that out the front no can we take it out the back no not so far that can only come to right there and then it hits the pinion or the main gear Well, and we're going to have to get it apart because this is very gritty. Let's, but you guys aren't seeing a whole lot here because we're zoomed out too far. All right. Or in too far. Okay. So what am I going to have? Okay. That, we are almost off of the post, it looks like right there. Or is that just dirt? No, it's just dirt. Okay. So how do we get that to come back over? There we go. It looks like all we got to do is push down. Hmm. I think we're going to have to go out the front with this. But so far, I don't see anything holding it on the front. Oh, there we go. Okay. We have a clip right here that we've got to pop loose which is going to allow, hopefully, this piece to slide over and out, I think. I think that's the way that's going to work. It certainly is what it looks like. Um, let me get a different tool. Zero success getting it out. Oh, I bet it unscrews. I bet that's just a bend over tab. And I bet that if we bend the tab over flat, like so, that we can unscrew this assembly. Okay, let's give it a shot. There we go. Okay. And that brought the whole assembly out. And freed up the rest of it. All right. So, let's look at this in order. And this fell out the backside. And this sleeve now has fallen off of the main gear. I happen to know where that goes, I think. All right. We've got this. It fits on here, like so. That's going to fit there. Then we've got our, man, this is gritty. We've got this assembly here, and it has an E-clip right here. It is holding something together, or it holds it to keep it from going too far in. And, uh, yeah, this is really dirty. We'll have to clean all that off. 
that ring right there is what keeps this from going too far in. And this side's up inside of here. This goes over the top. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew it off of here now. All right. And that tells us how that part goes. Now, the only part that we're not talking about here yet is gonna be the pinion gear. Oh, and it's, yeah, we did. It's right here. That comes off, that's where the pinion gear is. Okay, so there's pinion gear. It's on this sleeve. It's going to rotate inside of here. All right, so that's the pinion sleeve. This is our push button. All right, that's got that. Now we're gonna come over here. Now look, if you look right here, this sleeve was inside of here, like so. And that fell out when we took this loose. Okay, so let's go ahead now. We're gonna take this main gear out right here, like so. And if you look, there's our anti-reverse Paul, and that sits on this gear here like so and it needs probably needs a little bit of adjusting because it's uh, not got a lot of drag there okay so we'll adjust that in just a hair set that over to the side and if you look it's installed this direction so I'll be trying to figure that out in a little while when I go to put it back so what happens is it's rotating forward. This will lift out like so. And then when it goes to back pedal, it'll catch. Okay. So let's set that over to the side. Now we're going to take off the anti-reverse with the washer. It's got a big washer under it. That's a fairly heavy, thick washer. Okay. Those go over here and they're going to be going on in that order. Then we have this disc, and this is our drag disc. Where's the whole, now there is corrosion on this. This is very rough. I'm gonna have to try to clean that up some. That's very rough right there. Okay, but it does have a friction disc on this side, and that friction disc, that's a drag disc, it's going to ride right here. Now there should be, on the other side of this gear, another disc, yeah, there it is right there. There's our drag disc for the other side. And all of this goes in there. And it's all very, very dirty. So, I'm going to pause the video at this point. I'm going to take and scrub all these parts up, rinse them off, and we're going to see about getting it put back together. I'm back now. All the parts have been cleaned, or most all of them. I think i got two C-clips over here I haven't cleaned, but everything else is pretty well clean and ready to start going back together. We've got the case cleaned out here. Uh, it's in really good shape. The paint, everything on this thing is really nice. Uh, okay, but in order to start putting this together, where do we need to go? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is right down here where the anti-reverse sits. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of oil on that anti-reverse. Right there, and where it rides. Okay, then, then I'm going to grease inside the body here, like so, with a little bit of grease. And I'm gonna come back and slip this sleeve inside, like so. Okay. I'll set that over to the side now. And now we need to build up the main gear. And that's gonna start off with the crankshaft here. And onto the crankshaft is going to go all of these parts and they're actually going to go pretty much in this order what i am going to do though is get a little bit of cal's universal drag grease so give me just a second i'll be right back okay i'm back what i'm going to do i'm going to put just a little bit of grease on these and then i'm going to turn around and wipe it right back off again okay because i have found that with this style of fishing reel with this style of drag system Practically any lubricant on the drag washers at all makes it so that you can't hardly crank in anything. Okay, so it's wiped back off. It's just a little bit of lubricant is all I put on there, and I've wiped it back off. We got another one over here, and we're going to wipe that on as well. And then I'm going to turn right around and wipe it off. I just want a little bit down in the pores. I don't want it to be sticky or greasy. I want just 
enough to keep these so they don't dry out and crack. All right, there's both drag washers. All right, we're gonna start off by placing this little thin drag washer inside the main gear like so. Okay, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna install the crankshaft through the main gear like that. Now, make sure that these two springs here are sticking up just a little bit because you're gonna need that. That's the tension for this. Okay, drop that in. Next, go ahead and we'll just sit it down here. Next is gonna go this drag washer. It goes on right there, followed up by this drag washer. This is the main one that presses down against it, okay? And it's this one's a little bit crusty on the back side, but I cleaned it up as best I could. Uh, somehow, it kind of got a little distorted. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on the back side of this. Not on, I don't want anything on the front side, but I wanna put just a little bit on the back side to help protect it from ever getting any further corrosion. Okay, we're gonna slide this onto the square shaft. It's got the square hole, slides down like so. Remember, don't get any grease on the front side of it. Okay, next is going to go this anti-reverse cog. It drops down like so. Then we're gonna put our anti-reverse claw on. Okay, we're gonna slide this in. I bent these in just a little bit. I didn't use anything more than my fingernail to bend them in with it a little bit, just to close that gap, just a hair. And then this is gonna slide on over top like that. Okay. That's good. All right, when we slide this in, we're gonna to have to see if we can get this hole right here to line up on that post right there. That's gonna be a little bit tricky. Okay, we got one more piece left to put in. And that's going to be this washer. Okay, so go ahead and drop the washer on. Like so. And we should be ready to put this in. And I think that washer will actually help act as a little bit of a spacer to keep that anti-reverse from going too far in. Okay, now we're going to turn all this over. Don't try to turn it upside down and dump it in because everything's going to fall off if you do. Okay, bring them up level with each other, slide it over. Okay, now that you've got it started, you should be able to line up the anti-reverse claw on that pin like so, and then push this back down like that. Okay. Now, if you want that to stay in place, what we're gonna do, we're gonna come back and we're gonna put grease on the front side of this right here and then we're going to take our anti I'm sorry I'm missing a part am I I just had it there it is it's hiding behind it okay we're going to sit that there we're going to put a little bit of grease just on the front side here like so and then we're going to set our cross wind block onto it once we put a little lubrication in it, like so. Once we've done that, we're gonna flip it over, like so. Remember the large side of this goes to the rear of the rear, real, rear of the reel, and we're gonna slide that down like so. And now, it's gonna come this piece, and it's got to come in. That's not gonna hold itself up. And if we let it go in, I don't want that to fall out. So, let's go ahead and put this piece together. Okay, we have this sleeve right here and this arm. We're gonna oil this arm or inner, in, inner sleeve, slide it in, maneuver it around a little bit, make sure it's got plenty of oil and lubrication inside it and then if that's not enough come back and add a little bit from in from the other end on the inside I'm gonna make sure that's well oiled I don't want to grease it because I'm afraid it'll slow the reel down okay now we're gonna come back and we're gonna put grease on this shaft and all this shaft does is slide in and out as the button is pushed. 
So we're not worried about how much it might slow down the reaction of the reel because it's only going to be for the button. So I'll put the grease in there, push it up inside. Okay, that part's good to go now. The last part to go onto this is going to be this piece here. We'll go ahead and this one's a little bit tight, so we're going to screw it in. There you go. And now we should be able to put this back inside here. We're going to get this shaft to go inside of that hole right there. Okay, it's got to go through here and down into there. So let's go ahead and see if we can maneuver that in. Into that hole. And then we're going to start screwing it in. And now this piece has got to sit over top of this post over here. See this post on this side? I got to get that piece to sit up on there like that. Okay. Then go ahead and screw this back in the rest of the way in. All right. We're going to check it, make sure it looks okay so far. And we'll tighten it down just a hair. There. Then don't have to crank it too hard. Okay, and now we're going to bend this tab back up so that it can't come unscrewed. And so if the next person thinks it's a slide out tab that they have to pull. <laughs> okay, now that put the shaft back in over here. All right, as this rotates, see that moves in and out like it's supposed to. All right. We're oiled, we're greased. Okay, we're going to go ahead and add some more oil into the shaft here. Because we want this to be well oiled. All right, we should be able to easily turn this and we are and you can see that it does everything it's supposed to do on this side all right now comes the difficult part we have to put this piece back in this is going to slide on let's go ahead and grease these two posts here because they have to go into these two holes here and slide in and out. I'll put a little grease down in each hole, like so. You can see that very well. Let's do it again. Put a little grease in there. Now we're gonna slide this down and in those holes. And now we've gotta get them to come through the ones on the crosswind block, which they have done now. And this is where these two E-clips have to be reinstalled. I'm going to wipe them off real quick. All right, they should be ready to go. I'm going to try to set them in place using this little set of hemostats. And uh, we're going to set the first one in like so. Get it lined up. And now I will use a screwdriver to pop it in the rest of the way. And it's on. We're going to accomplish that again on the other side. It wasn't nearly as bad putting them on as it was taking them off. Except I just dropped it. Keep missing the hemostat. Let's try this one more time. There we go. Set this in place. Put that E clip in place and let it go. And take my screwdriver. Up, oh, came back off. I spoke too soon, didn't I? Let's try this again. Let's see if we can snap that back on like so. All right, now that's got that in. And it locked in place. So now when we rotate this, 
See the panel comes up and down. Like so. Just zoom out a little bit so you can see what the heck I'm doing. And that's going to make the spool oscillate up and down. Okay. With that done, we're going to come back. And we're going to grease the main gear and this shaft. And now will some of this grease get in there onto those drag washers? Probably. But at least we didn't grease it to begin with. Okay. Oh, our, uh, that's what's going on. We're not rotating yet because we don't have our tension on our drag washer yet. All right. So let's go ahead at that point and put that side back together. Okay. Let's put on our first washer. Then our roller bearing. Okay. Now I went back and looked at the video on this to make sure I wasn't getting it wrong. And the way that this dropped out, because I didn't see it when it came out, okay, is we're going to have this part on here, like so. And this washer on here, like so. At least that's the way they dropped out. We're going to see how it works. And this is going to slide into here. Now there's, see this piece inside here? See how it's got the notches on it? Like we've got the bumps out here. Well, those two fit together and that gives us a, uh, a drag adjust. Okay. So let's set this now back in place. Set the square back over it. Put this back inside. Screw it down. As we screw that down, we should be activating our main gear. There we go. Now our main gear is turning. And now we can finish lubing the main gear and pinion gear. Okay, very nice. Got that done. I think we're about ready to start putting our button back together. And uh, this is gonna fit inside here. Oh, there it is. This metal plate back here. That grease, we're gonna grease that. That little metal plate, because that's what that brass rod is going to ride on right there. And this is going to set into place like so. And this is going to act as a spring to help push it back out. No. It acts as a hook. That is a hook that hooks onto this post right here and keeps the button from coming out too far. Otherwise, the button would just bounce right out. Okay, we're going to set this in place. And like so. Make sure the button is in. With that done, that's why when I took the one screw out here, I wasn't able to remove the button. See how the button now is locked in place? And that's what that post does. It locks that place piece in. Okay, I'm gonna come back, take that out in just a minute and put it back in again once I've got this other one situated because that one has a pivot point on it. There we go, get it lined up in the hole. You have to kind of feel around for that hole. There's nothing there to guide it in the hole. You kind of have to find it yourself. All right, let's take this one back out for a second. And we're gonna add some lube. Ok, 
Okay. Let's go ahead and grease up that screw because that button rides on it. Okay. Well, that didn't do much for us, but we don't have the rest of it screwed back in yet, so hopefully that's going to, there's your spring action right there. It's going to make the rest of it operate. We're going to put some oil in here and put some oil on the spring. Screw this back down. And I believe that's all the way. Okay, now we push the button. There we go. That's, I don't know if you saw any of that. Let's back this up. All right. We went in and we added oil to this spring here. And along here, right here, and here where this is going to ride. And then we put this in and screwed it back in, like so. Okay, once it's done, you should be able to rotate, okay, and adjust the drag. And what are we missing? Anybody notice? <laughs> Take this back off. Let's go back and put our spool on now. Otherwise, we wouldn't have any line. Okay, spool's going to, let's go ahead and ro rotate this around to where this comes all the way up. Make it easier to put in. And put it in place and lock it in place. You can feel it lock. Okay, once it does, now the spool oscillates up and down. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of line out, like so. And we'll screw the spinner head or rotor back on. And run the line through the head. And line up the notches. And there you go. Now I've got the drag pretty tight. Let's loosen it up a little bit. There you go. Okay, now let's tighten the drag down a little bit. Tighten it down a little more. A little more. That's good, it's nice and smooth. And there you have the Abomatic. Let's push the button. The Abom try the anti-reverse. Yes, it's working. Okay, and I'm going to tie off a uh, pop top tab onto the end of it just like my daddy used to do and uh, this reel is ready to go out and either go fishing or sit on somebody's shelf because it's in really nice shape um, like I said we picked this up at the flea market and uh, I'm not going to tell you what we paid for it but we got a, an outstanding deal on it and uh it's ready to go fishing. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. Tell me what you didn't like about it. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to Young Martin's Reels. Um, tell your friends if you think somebody might like to watch the videos or uh, might have a specific job that they need done. Uh, by all means, do so. Uh, I'm going to strip the rest of the line off. No, I'll, I'll leave it on there. Just, just leave it. And uh, send it on its way. Anybody who gets it is going to know it probably needs a new line. Uh, polish that side just a little bit. That is a very nice reel. Um, uh, for now, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels signing out.